When I first started a website, my first website ever, the most confusing part of starting that website to me was, you know, aside from all the, the details of like how do we actually get elements onto a web page, I think one of the most confusing parts was the domain name system. And when I say that, all I'm talking about is the web domain that you type into your browser to get to a certain website. So if you want to go to Google, www.google.com. Now there's a lot going on behind the scenes that most people don't see. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. So if you found this video because you're in your Bluehost dashboard, you have no idea what's going on, or even if you're just evaluating the uh, different pricing plans that they're offering, you are in the right spot. We're gonna walk through all of that kind of stuff and you're gonna walk away with a much better understanding of not only Bluehost and how they handle domains, but how the internet handles domains. So here's the deal with Bluehost. When you sign up for any of their shared hosting plans, you're going to first see them asking you to register your one free domain. Every shared hosting plan comes with one free domain and therefore they ask you to register that first or you can actually import a domain from a different registrar if you already have one. The first thing that we have to talk about is the concept of a primary domain. I'll save you the hassle of watching the rest of this video and tell you exactly why a primary domain is so important. It's because it directs all of the traffic to the public HTML folder on your Bluehost web server. If that makes no sense at all, then you're not alone. This made absolutely zero sense to me, and we're gonna have to talk a little bit more to truly understand the uh, significance of this primary domain that Bluehost is assigning you. And in this case, since we're talking about Bluehost, you're most likely starting a WordPress website. So what is WordPress? You know, what is a WordPress website? Well, it's really just a bunch of files. And if you don't believe me, you can actually go to their website and download a zip file of WordPress. So it's just a bunch of files, but just because we have files does not mean that we have a website. So in order to start a website, you not only need those files uh, that is what we call WordPress, but you need a host and you need a domain. So essentially you need a computer that's going to store those files and then a domain name that's going to kind of be the map that tells the rest of the internet, okay, here is where those files are actually stored. We've got just one more thing that we have to cover before all of this is gonna to come together and actually make sense. And that one thing is understanding like, what are the actual components of a domain name? So what I'm gonna put up on the screen is uh, a website that I own, uh, www.thediygolfer.com. I play a lot of golf, I like to golf, and I have a website, go check it out if you uh, also like to golf. Anyways, this domain name is going to help us understand the components of any domain on the internet. So you see on the far right is the .com. So this is actually what we call the top level domain. And this is probably a convention, like most of the websites you go to are gonna be a .com, but it could be several other things. You could have .net, .org, .gov, or a bunch of other different top level domains. Now the middle part is going to be the actual domain name. So the DIY golfer is the domain name. And when you combine those two together, you have what we call the root domain. So the DIYgolfer.com is the root domain that I own. And with that root domain, I can actually have pretty much unlimited subdomains uh, and even sub subdomains, which we're not gonna cover. And so the www part is actually a subdomain. And again, this is kind of a convention most of the web is going to be www as the subdomain and .com or com as the top level domain. But this is pretty arbitrary actually. If I wanted to, I could host this website, the DIY Golfer, I could host it at something like BBB 
.thediygolfer.com. Now the problem with that is obviously no one's going to remember that. No one's going to remember to type that in. So it's mainly a convention. You actually have many choices when it comes to subdomains. You can, you know, if you've seen Google, they use subdomains with, uh, if you type in drive.google.com or photos.google.com or I think mail or calendar.google.com, they utilize the concept of subdomains really well to basically direct you to all of their different apps and websites. And I've actually done that too. So I have a golf training app and what I've done since it relates directly to the DIY golfer site is instead of making a completely different website, all I did was I added a subdomain called training .thediygolfer.com instead of www.thediygolfer.com. So that is the concept of you know subdomains and the different pieces of a domain name. And at this point, I think we are finally ready to talk about all of these different concepts that uh, are on the pricing cards of the Bluehost shared hosting plans. We're going to start off with the concept of a parked domain. Now with Bluehost, on the basic plan, you get a total of five parked domains. With all the other plans, you get unlimited parked domains. But what are they actually talking about? Well, a parked domain is going to simply refer to any domain name that you register that is going to be essentially an alias to your primary domain. So remember, the primary domain is kind of the, the basis of all of this. and everything is built around it. So a park domain is basically like saying if I had registered www.bluehostpluswordpress.com and I wanted to also purchase, let's say, www.bluehostpluswordpress.website. So I chose a different top level domain and a probably more common example would be you get the .com and you get the .net and maybe one or two others. But in this case, the .website was only like two bucks and I didn't want to spend the money just for the sake of an example. So anyways, let's say that I wanted to get www.bluehostpluswordpress.website and what I wanted to do with that was essentially load the same exact WordPress website that was on the primary domain. And so that is the purpose of a parked domain in Bluehost. You can take a completely separate domain, and in this example, I'm using the same, you know, I guess, domain name, so Bluehost plus WordPress, but in actuality, I could register something completely different. The next type of Bluehost domain that we're gonna talk about is the add-on domain. So as of right now, um, I have bluehostpluswordpress.com as my primary uh, domain. I have that registered. It's the, basically the only website that I have on my account. Now I have that .website domain that's simply sitting there as a park domain, an alias of my primary. But what if I wanted to add a completely different website? And furthermore, I wanted to make it completely unrelated to my primary domain's website. So in that case, I would have to you know, make sure that I was on something greater than the basic plan. And all I would have to do is go into Bluehost, register my new domain name. Maybe I could do it something like Zach's Cool Baseball Cards or something like that. So Zach's Cool Baseball Cards.com. And I register that website or that domain name. And then that is part of my Bluehost account. And then I also create another WordPress website, which is totally separate from my Bluehost plus WordPress uh, .com website. So these are completely different entities and completely different domains. So that is what an add-on domain is. So essentially, if you're trying to build, you know, more than one website or basically two or more websites that are completely different, you're going to want something more than the basic plan so that you can get this add-on domain functionality. So I wanna make a photo gallery, but this photo gallery is directly related to my main site. But 
we probably want to install a different installation of WordPress because we want to install different plugins and you know we don't want to clutter up our main site so our goal here is to not only have a slightly different domain but we also want to have a completely different WordPress website well this gets a little confusing when you look at the pricing plans for Bluehost because they say with a basic plan you can only have one website well actually you can have more you can actually have up to I guess 25 because that's the number of subdomains that uh, you're allowed to have and little did most people know you can actually create unlimited WordPress websites within your Bluehost dashboard you just can't associate those with completely different root domains so if we wanted to create a gallery website we could actually go into our Bluehost dashboard, add a new WordPress website, and then what we're going to do is actually host that, host those files at a slightly different URL. And so what I'm going to do is basically uh, assign this to www.bluehostpluswordpress.com slash gallery site. And so what this is going to do is take a fresh installation of WordPress, remember WordPress is just a bunch of files and it's going to place it in a folder under the public HTML folder on our Bluehost computer and so this is you know the concept of the primary domain kind of houses all the rest of them and so we're going to create this new WordPress website and put it under public HTML and then what we're going to do is assign this to a subdomain so you could basically visit this website at two different URLs. You could type into the browser www.bluehostpluswordpress.com slash gallery site, and you could see it there. But what if we wanted to make that a little bit cleaner? So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our Bluehost dashboard. We're going to register the subdomain called gallery.bluehostpluswordpress.com. So we'll go ahead and register that subdomain. And now what we want to do is actually point that to a specific folder on the Bluehost computer file system. And if you remember when we created that WordPress website just a second ago, we associated it with the path gallery site. And so if you come into our Bluehost computer's file system, you'll see that we have this newly created folder called gallery site and we can actually point that subdomain to that folder. So let's recap this for one second because right now I'm sure you're very confused. So basically what is happening is if you remember this whole analogy about, about the Bluehost web server who is constantly on and it's constantly listening for different requests coming into the computer and it has a bunch of DNS rules. So as of right now or before we registered this subdomain we had I think it was two DNS rules so the first one is the default DNS rule that is assigned to all new Bluehost accounts so that DNS rule says okay hey server I want you to always load the public HTML directory when you see a request for the primary domain on this account okay so that's DNS rule number one now if you remember we registered a parked domain which is an alias to that primary and so that's our DNS rule number two what that's saying is basically hey mister web server um, in addition to that first rule every time you see this specific domain www.bluehostpluswordpress.website which is a parked domain I want you to load whatever the primary domain is loading which just happens to be the public HTML directory and then finally we've added this subdomain which has actually added two more rules to our server so what what it has done is if you remember when we created it we said I want this WordPress website to load at www.bluehostpluswordpress.com slash gallery dash site and so anytime I visit that URL we are expecting for that site to load rather than the main WordPress website. And so what that has done has added one more server rule that says, hey server, every time you see this domain slash gallery site, 
I want you to load the contents of the public HTML slash gallery site folder. So we're not loading the same WordPress website anymore. And then furthermore, we registered a subdomain that was going to point to that same folder within our public HTML folder. So we have two different URLs that we could type in that will load the same exact website. We also have two URLs that we can type in to load the primary site. So we have our primary domain and our park domain. And so that is the concept of subdomains and how you can actually create more than one website with even a basic plan on Bluehost. If you found this video useful or learned anything from it, be sure to give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel. And if you have decided that, yes, you're going to start a website and you haven't already, uh, be sure to check out this link on the screen, and you can go get registered at Blue Bluehost uh, starting for something like $3.95 per month uh, for web hosting, which is pretty darn good. So hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time.